हेलो एवरीबॉडी एंड वेलकम बैक टू अवर डिस्कशन ऑन द रेमेडी कॉल चिकम ऑटम नेल वी हैव बिन डिस्कसिंग दिस रेमेडी फ्रॉम डॉक्टर एन एम चौधरीज मटीरिया मेडिका एंड वी ऑलरेडी कम्प्लीटेड विद पार्ट वन एंड हियर इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ इट विच इज पार्ट टू सो दिस रेमेडी इज वेरी वेल इंडिकेटेड इन नेफ्राइटिस एज वेल विच इज द इन्फ्लमेशन ऑफ द किडनीज द नेफ्रॉन्स and whenever this happens anything related to kidney happens there is dropsy along with it that is edema okay and in colchicum dr nm choudhury says that nephritis is also seen after scarlatina so scarlatina is actually a rash a red color rash which uh, you know you can see all over the body after that disease or disorder you have uh, nephritis then colchicum can be the remedy along with other symptoms as well obviously so the urine of uh, colchicum is scanty bloody ink like and albuminous so over here dr n choudhury actually does not mention a lot of symptoms related to nephritis about colchicum but he has already mentioned the characteristic symptoms which colchicum presents us with okay so when you have those characteristic symptoms present and along with that the patient has nephritis and also while prescribing you always go through all the authors books okay you always go through the whole materia medica so you'll understand the other uh, symptoms as well right and then you can prescribe better so now uh, further he goes to talk about the nausea of pregnancy we already seen that colchicum has nausea as a characteristic point right it's it's very characteristic in nausea uh, in colchicum so they also have this nausea of pregnancy at times the symptom will become so worrisome and constant that it baffles the best medical effort and leads to fatal results so you can see it will this symptom in colchicum can be so so worrisome that it can even you know best medical effort can also fail in front of it and it might lead to fatal results meaning it might lead to the death of the mother so you can see how uh, violent the vomiting or the nausea of colchicum is so a faint aching sensation about the navel that is what she has okay as she must eat so she has this feeling in her umbilical region that she wants to eat like that is the feeling of hunger a faint aching sensation which makes her understand that she is hungry but the very thought and sight of food produces such loathing and disgust that eating becomes an impossibility so you can see how pitiful the condition is she is she is wanting to eat she is hungry but even thinking of food even watching on seeing the food is giving her loathing and disgust and that is why she is not able to eat she is getting nausea you know vomiting and sometimes this may go on for months the mother almost dying from inanition inanition so you can see so this may go on for months and months during pregnancy so first of all why does one feel nausea during pregnancy it is due to the hormone of pregnancy that is hcg human chorionic gonadotropin is a hormone which leads to nausea of pregnancy now in these people colchicum we have extreme amount of nausea extreme so they can't even think of food can't even watch food uh, without having the feeling of nausea all right allopathy in these cases that this is what dr nm choudhury tells us that allopathy in these cases in these cases advocates the bringing of miscarriage to save the mother's life because this is not a normal situation okay even after best medical efforts so you are giving her medicines you are trying whatever you can do you are doing but still she is not able to improve still she is not able to even eat because even thinking and watching food is giving her warm nausea so now they think that only the bringing of miscarriage can save this mother so that is what they will promote but here comes homeopathy to help our mm is replete with remedies like colchicum the remedy which we are studying itself coculus epicac etc which can save the lives of both the mother and the child so this is the power that homeopathy holds this is the beauty of homeopathy in such cases when even allopathy is not able to help the patient homeopathy can do wonders they can save this mother's life save the child's life it's amazing and let's see how these all these remedies help right so let's start with the remedy coculus and coculus has this nausea which is worse from riding in a carriage or while sailing so carriage does not necessarily mean a carriage of this type but it can be a car it can be a bus it can be a train whatever and when when any patient has uh, nausea 
while they're sailing, while they are, you know, traveling, then you can think of cochlea, which is this nausea is especially felt in the head. So if you can remember these pictures, okay, these drawings and um, relate them to cochlea, remember this whole uh, page itself, okay, if you can, if you have a vision, visual memory, this will be very beneficial to you. Right now, we're going to look, uh, look at many such remedies and their indications, their main indications related to nausea so that we're able to remember them, right? So, I'll be presenting such drawings along with it so that it helps us uh, memorizing it, okay? Memorizing the indications in a fun way. The next remedy is Ipecac and the very characteristic symptom of Ipecac is the nausea which is constantly present. So, even when you study Ipecac as a remedy, okay, you will see, you will find that one of the characteristic symptoms of Ipecac, the main major symptoms of Ipecac is this nausea, which is very, very constant, which is, you know, which will not give him a moment's relief also, which will not be better by anything. So, there is this constant nausea. It is also very much like colchicum. Colchicum also we have studied that case, right? In which the they feel that that the mother can die because of the constant nausea. In the same way, Ipecac has a nausea which is constant. There is not a moment's relief, right? Kali carb has this nausea without vomiting. So they will have a lot of nausea, but there won't be any vomit. And this nausea comes on only during a walk. See how characteristic it is. And how our uh, homeopaths, our masters have observed in so, so much detail that the nausea is coming on only when they are walking. So, the patient knows it, but we do not ask. So, it needs to be asked, okay? When does the nausea come or when it is worse? When is it worse, okay? So, it comes on only during a walk. She feels like lying down anywhere and she prefers even dying to such nausea. So suppose she is walking and feeling the nausea. The nausea will be so much, so much that she will feel like now I need to lie somewhere. And she will, she will even do that. And the nausea still won't be, you know, it, it, would be, it would be so much that she will prefer even dying to such nausea. She will feel that it is better to die than to suffer from this nausea. And also there is great sleepiness with eating. So if you find all these symptoms, you can be... Uh, sure about Kali Kaab, you can think of this remedy, right? So, they will be walking, they will have nausea, they can, they will lie down anywhere, they will not feel better, they will want to die to such nausea, right? So, about creosote, Dr. N.M. Chaudhary writes that this patient will vomit sweetish water. So, the vomit is, will have a taste, okay, a peculiar taste which will be sweetish, okay? And this vomit will happen just before the breakfast and when you talk about what does she vomit out, so she will never vomit out breakfast or dinner. That she can retain. But she vomits out her supper, her lunch. After eating her lunch, she has this urge to vomit and it all gets out and it does not get retained in the body. So that is about creosote, what Dr. N.M. Chaudhary says. Let's go ahead and see what uh, Dr. N.M. Chaudhary says about pulsatilla. So, pulsatilla has a distinguishing point. So, the nausea might not be very characteristic, but the distinguishing point in pulsatilla is the excessive bad taste in mouth in the morning. So, while we were discussing pulsatilla, I, I had used this drawing of pulsatilla, which shows her weeping, because pulsatilla may, the main symptom is that she weeps. That is what Dr. Nash has told uh, talked about, and we have discussed about pulsatilla in detail from Nash's Materia Medica. There also he mentions this bad taste which Pulsatilla has and that is also that also especially in the morning and now Dr. N.N. Chaudhary is also telling about it. So you understand that it's a very important uh, indication of this remedy. It also helps us in differentiating the nausea of this remedy, right? So the next remedy is Lobelia. Lobelia has this nausea and vomiting with a peculiar symptom that is profuse salivation, this profuse running of water from the mouth, okay. They will have this running of water from the mouth which will be a characteristic symptom indicating us towards Lobelia. There will be aggravation of the sleeping and amelioration by taking even a little food. So see, in Colchicum we have studied that even the sight or the thought of the food is giving them nausea but in lobelia the nausea is getting better by eating a little food by taking a little food and after sleeping when you should feel fresh that is when they are getting this nausea so it's very characteristic it's very different uh, for and that is why that actually that 
itself makes it easy for us to remember, right? So lobelia has this nausea along with this profuse running of water from the mouth and it is aggravated by taking a little food which is exactly opposite to colchicum. Even the sight or thought of food is leading to nausea and colchicum. And after vomiting, they will have profuse sweat. Okay, remember that lobelia has this profuse sweat after, sweat after vomiting. Now, we, we are going to discuss a remedy which will have this sweat during vomiting, right? Um, so, let's go to that remedy now. That remedy is veratrum album. So, veratrum album has this distinguishing point that they have cold sweat on forehead while vomiting. So, first of all, cold sweat on forehead is actually a characteristic symptom of veratrum. When we will study veratrum in detail or if you go back and study it from any books, you will understand that there is this cold sweat on forehead which is very characteristic in veratrum album and now uh, also with the vomiting, they have, they have this type of sweat cold sweat on forehead plus along with that there is great desire for fruits for juicy things for acid and salty food all right so just now we talked about lobelia which had sweating after vomiting and veratrum album have, has this sweating while vomiting okay this is cold sweat on forehead while vomiting plus there's great desire for fruits juice thing juicy things wagara, wagara, okay that is what we need to remember now let's Discuss the nausea of a remedy which we have already discussed uh, in detail under Nash's Materia Medica. The remedy is, so Nux Vomica has this ineffectual desire for vomiting. So when we had studied Nux Vomica, we saw these, these pictures and we know that they also have this ineffectual desire to stool. So they have this urge but there is no effect. They are not able to pass stools. In the same way, the, the same thing also runs about in vomiting. So in vomiting also they do not have this uh, any effect of the desire. They, they want to vomit but there is no vomit is coming out. So ineffectual desire for vomiting. She feels she would be better if she could only vomit. And it is the same for the stools. She feels she would be better if she could pass some stools. So that is what Nuxwamiga is to the core. So you should understand this. You can remember this in relation to the stools because it, the symptoms are almost the same. So there's this intense desire for vomiting and she feels she would be better if she could only vomit. Right? The last remedy that Dr. N.M. Chaudhary talks about is tobacco. Tobacco has this deathly nausea. You read any book, every author tells you about the deathly nausea that tobacco has. And even when you yourself smell tobacco, you do not, do, don't we feel nauseous, nauseating, right? Everybody feels that. So it's nausea. This nausea is very central to tobacco. There is this deathly nausea. So now there is this deathly faintness and pallor of the face. The face is also, you know, very pale. And the nausea of tobacco is relieved by going out into the open air. So this is a point that you need to remember. First of all, there is deathly nausea. And secondly, this nausea is relieved by going out into the open air with a pale face. Alright? So these were the remedies. Um... Let's go to the asthma of colchicum. Uh, asthma, asthma of colchicum is caused by hydrothorax or hydropericardium which means that in the thorax there is accumulation of water or in the pericardium there is accumulation of water. In both these cases you can have asthma and when you have these conditions you tend to have great dropsical swelling of the lower limbs extending up to the knees. So dropsical swelling means edema. Your legs will be swollen up till the knees so that is what happens and when you have this kind of disease this kind of condition you get asthma and in the asthma the symptom is always that respiration is difficult breathing is oppressed so this is common to every asthma patient but now what is different uh, that they feel better by bending forward also this is also common she is hardly able to lie down so almost all the asthma patients are not able to lie down right they are they they are aggravated by lying down but here this patient is also aggravated by lying down but better by bending forward. This has to be remembered. And due to this hydropericardium, the heart's impulses also sound muffled and indistinct. Okay, so the main thing in asthma of colchicum from Dr. N.M. Chaudhary's Materia Medica that you have to remember is that the, no the respiration is difficult which is ameliorated by bending forward. So moving ahead and speaking about the rheumatic pains of this remedy which are very important. It is a sphere of action for colchicum. As we were, uh, we have already discussed in part 1 of colchicum when we were studying the toxicology of this remedy. When we were talking about how these, um, this remedy has been used by quacks for gout. We talked about its sphere of action on rheumatic 
affections right so here uh, this patient has this pain in clavicle in shoulders in loin in hips and especially in the right trapezius okay this is the right trapezius muscles okay this is where your trapezius muscle lies okay this is a rough diagram so in the right trapezius they have pain basically okay majorly and this is also a very very important remedy for torticollis so what is torticollis torticollis is actually an inherited condition you know the patients the babies get it soon after the after birth and this is actually a condition in which the neck muscles you know they will contract and that is why the head is twisted to one side okay the head gets twisted to one side this is torticollis so in these conditions when there is severe pressing pain and tension in cervical muscles and the pain is so intense that even swallowing becomes difficult so the baby cannot swallow they, they are not able to take the milk also and you can you can think of this remedy as a specific for it also because uh, babies are not going to give us a lot of symptoms right so that is uh, uh, what dr nm chaudhary tells us about torticollis and colchicum is specifically applicable in the rheumatism of the superior extremities the upper limbs right the pain in the arms okay and it is of which character it is paralytic okay paralytic and very violent so violent that he can hardly hold even light object along with that they also have pain in the lower extremities there is pain for four part of tibia and cramps in the legs and feet right so these are these are not very characteristic symptoms they will not guide you to uh, colchicum but if they are present along with the characteristic features of colchicum you can think of this remedy right the pains in general uh, the rheumatic pains of uh, colchicum are shooting and tearing in nature they are very changeable okay they will break out suddenly in certain limb and then disappear just as suddenly from some other right the joints are very painful and they are not often swollen or reddened but they still can be very painful especially the small joints are affected and gout is also a major thing for which we which may you know uh, present to you with colchicum symptoms now there is also this sensation of lameness we have already talked about the paralytic kind of pain in the uh, superior extremities right now there is also this sensation of lameness in the limbs the parts seem almost paralyzed there is a sen they are sensitive to slightest touch least vibration renders the pain unbearable the pain is so much that they they do not want to be touched they do not want even the least of vibration rheumatic pains that these this remedy is uh, this remedy has is aggravated in damp and cold exposure increases towards the evening and decreases by the day break and both of these are the uh, modalities which were already discussed in the characteristic symptoms of colchicum so this also gives you an idea that the characteristic symptoms that dr nm choudhury enlists during the start of any remedy are so important because in every sphere of action of that remedy whichever remedy you are going to you are studying has those characteristic symptoms present right so even if you learn the characteristic symptoms by a heart it is half work done and all of it other than that you have to anyway go through and you'll learn slowly and you will like remember slowly but you have to remember the characteristic symptoms of any remedy dr nm choudhury makes our task very easy by giving them one above one after another okay by uh, giving them in the order of the importance very precisely and very easy to understand and remember right next he tells us that hc allen gives colchicum an important place in the therapeutics of intermittent occurrings this is a book by hc allen and he gives colchicum a very important place a lot of writing he has done about it so he tells us over there that uh, in late autumn this patient these patients tend to have gastric and abdominal symptoms and this is intermittently occurring every late autumn they'll have this gastric and abdominal symptoms in which the tongue will be thick white downy fur will be there on the tongue then will be chill in the extremities and they will feel better by remaining quiet after which there is a case which has been cited by allen in therapeutics of fever from the record of dr holly and it is very important this case okay it has a peculiar strange and characteristic indication which is this nausea and disgust at the sight or smell of the food so what actually happened is it was a case of og of the quotidian type malaria the fever coming on punctually at 10 am so every time the fever came at 10 am 10 in the morning along with that the patient had violent thirst intense headache and great chill and after this natrum mur was given to the patient but there was not much success and there was great disappointment in fact 
the doctor you know tried every remedy went from remedy to rem remedy but there was still no success finally uh, the doctor found out this symptom that there is nausea and disgust at the sight or smell of food and after knowing the symptom he gave one dose of colchicum and after this dose neither the fever nor the chill ever appeared okay so now dr nm choudhury says that from his own experience he has had this fact repeatedly proved in more instances in many instances let right, that success responds quickly and undeniably when the prescription is based on characteristic indications rather than any dry usual common place method of prescribing on the totality of any unimportant unnecessary useless symptomatology some real and others faked up so he tells us that you do not you should not make a totality of any unimportant unnecessary useless symptoms okay whenever you have a case you you need to pick out the characteristic symptom out of that case and on the basis of that characteristic symptom you have to prescribe uh, you need not do keynote prescription you can take the totality but in the totality there must be only characteristic symptoms present no need of taking any unnecessary unimportant all the symptoms that the patient has okay the characteristic symptoms to be symptoms should be considered for prescription and you will never be you know uh, tasting failure if you do that you no know? the remedies will respond respond quickly and undeniably with this we complete colchicum from dr n m choudhury's materia medica now let's revise whatever we learnt learnt in this part so in this part of colchicum we talked about the first of all the nephritis of this remedy the nephritis of this remedy did not have many characteristic symptoms only one important symptom that we had to remember was that this nephritis may be there after scarlatina which was i told you a, a rash okay red rash all over the body along with that the urine was inky like right, ink colored and it was uh, it was also bloody it was also albuminous right then we went on to study a very important symptom the nausea the nausea of pregnancy that this remedy has so you already discussed nausea as a characteristic symptoms of a symptom of colchicum in part 1 and now we discussed about the nausea of pregnancy which is a uh, very very prominent because the mother can even die of this pregnant uh, die of this nausea but the very characteristic thing, thing about this nausea is that even the sight or thought of food will give them nausea right so they cannot eat even if they feel hungry even if they, they have this you know a uh, faint aching sensation aching sensation in their navel they telling them that they hungry they still cannot eat and that leads to possible chances chances of fatality of the mother right after which we discussed many remedies uh, for nausea nausea right and we compared them so let us try to recollect what indications and what remedies we studied so we studied about coculus which had uh, nausea when they ride a carriage or when they you know sailed and we also studied about kalika which also had very characteristic symptom that they had nausea when they were walking and they wanted they feel, the nausea was so much that they felt like uh, lying down okay lie down anywhere and they even even wanted to die rather than uh, suffering from this nausea right then we also studied about a remedy called creosotum right creosotum had the, has this sweet vomitus right sweet vomitus and especially this sweet vomitus is present before breakfast and also there was another symptom that lunch may lunch will come out when they have when they have lunch they will vomit it all but nothing happens to breakfast and dinner they can retain it well we also studied about ipecac in which any way the main symptom is nausea when you study the remedy you will find it out that nausea is a main symptom of ipecac and there is this constant nausea which does not get relieved by anything they do not have even a moment's relief also we studied about nakswamika right nakswamika has a symptom which we have already studied about it it is characteristic symptom of nakswamika ineffectual desire even in the stools there is they have this ineffectual desire now even in vomiting okay they feel that if they vomit they will feel better that is what they uh, have uh, they want to do like they if they want to vomit 
and they feel that if I vomit it will be better but they cannot. Then we also studied about the remedy pulsatilla. Pulsatilla had a very characteristic symptom which also dis which was also discussed by Dr. E. V. Nash which was bad taste in the mouth, right? That also especially in the morning, morning time. We studied about tobacco which is also, which is actually made from tobacco. So tobacco had this deathly nausea, right? Deathly nausea is there in tobacco and uh, it is emulated by going into open air and there is this great paler of the face, right? Then we also studied about the remedy veratrum album, right? In veratrum album, we talked about uh, uh, the very characteristic symptoms that there is cold sweat on forehead. And when we were discussing this, we had already discussed a remedy with sweat. So if you can remember the name, it will be better. So there had the uh, veratrum album has this cold sweat on forehead, especially during during vomiting, right? Plus there is this desire for fruits or for juicy things. We had studied another remedy which had warm sweat after vomiting, which was lobelia. Lobelia had sweat after vomiting. And the characteristic symptom was salivation, profuse running of water plus vomiting, when they are vomiting, right? And they had this aggravation after sleeping. And amelioration by taking little food. So you can, you had, you had, we have talked, we had talked about it. That this is very different because uh, when we studied about colchicum, we knew that colchicum had aggravation even by slight uh, or slight thought also of food. Okay, slight, you know, thought or even watching the food, they will have this uh, vomiting. But here in Lobelia, they are amulet by taking little food and aggravate by after sleep. So here in, in uh, colchicum, we are seeing then even slight look of food or even slight thought of food will give them nausea but in lobelia they will feel better after taking food so this was how we discussed all the remedies and then we went ahead to talk about the asthma of the remedy in which we talked about important symptom was amulated by bending forward so they have this uh, respiration oppressed which is which gets better by amulet uh, bending forward the, there was hydrothorax hydropericardium dropsical swelling uh, of the lower limbs right and then we studied about the rheumatism, which is also a very, very important area of this remedy. So rheumatism in which we saw that there is this right trapezium uh, is painful and it is a very great, it is a great remedy. Colchicum is great remedy for torticollis, right? We have studied this, that it is a great remedy for torticollis. What is torticollis? It is an inherited condition in which the neck muscles are stiffened and that is why the head twists to one side and colchicum is a remedy for that. Never forget about this. There was this uh, type of, you know, paralytic kind of pain in the superior extremities, right? In the superior extremities, there was this paralytic kind of pain. And they, they could not even hold light objects. It was very, very violent. Even in the lower extremities, there were pains. And what was the kind of pains that they had? Tearing type kind of pains, you know, shooting kinds of pain, changeable pains. And they would, you know, uh, break out suddenly in certain limbs and disappear as suddenly from others, right? We've discussed about this. Then we talked about the joints, which are also painful. And there was a sensation of lameness in this remedy, right? Lameness sensation of lameness was seen in this remedy very important and this sensation of lameness uh, was there uh, so th there was this paralyzed feeling they were sensitive to touch you know the slightest vibration that would also aggravate them and uh, then the characteristic symptoms which is aggravation from damp and cold is there and aggravation from you know uh, aggravation towards evening and which reduces towards daybreak so evening evening may there is rise and it increase in it decreases during daybreak so that is also there then we studied about the uh, symptoms that this remedy has during autumn right so during autumn this remedy has gastric and abdominal symptoms so it was in there in hc allen's uh, book right it's Allen's intermittent voila book so autumn may there is this gastric and abdominal symptoms right uh, 
and the tongue is thick quiet uh, the there is still in extremities they feel better by remaining quiet and then we discussed an important case in which there was this very symptom of colchicum present right and that is how colchicum helped so this is the all that we discussed in this lecture and i hope that you understood colchicum uh, in depth and you go back and read it from dr nm choudhury's material america thank you